Hey Cowboys, I'm Steve Nash. And I'm Miguel de Cesare, and here's our review of The Deadlands. In Deadlands, players are trying to control as many buildings as possible while gaining victory points. In the box, you'll get six outfit cards with different alignments to choose from, a deck of random encounters also with different alignments, a deck of equipment cards which contains things you'd normally find in a gulch, a deck of random events such as explosions in the mines or trains coming to town, spell cards and gadget cards for certain types of characters, objective cards for each of the outfits, player screens with rules and objectives summarized on the back of them, a rail station and mining game board, player movement and action sheets, a game board for each of the ten buildings forming the gulch, ghost rocks which you can find in the mines or by robbing people, a bunch of action tokens for each player, five dice and some really nice 3D figurines for each of the outfits in the game. Here's how you'll set up the game. Each player chooses an outfit and receives everything that goes with that outfit. They get their objective cards, figurines, ghost rocks, action tokens, player screens, action cards, and three equipment cards randomly. Next, shuffle all ten buildings and form a random gulch and place the train station to the left and the mines to the right of the gulch. Place the number of tokens on each building in clockwise order and place a townsfolk figurine on each of the tiles. Shuffle the encounter cards and place one for each tile. These represent the townsfolk on that tile, but are only flipped over when someone visits that building. With the ghost rocks each player has received, they can now buy items from the three cards they received. The items they do not buy go next to the general store. The jail always has the sheriff as a townsfolk at the start of the game. To figure out the condition to ending the game, roll a die and check the list in the rule book or on your player screens. When this condition is met, the game ends. Or, when three of these conditions are met, the game also ends. Each player places three of their figurines on any of the street spaces. Fill up the mines with ghost rocks according to the number of players playing. You're now ready to start the game. Each player simultaneously places three action tokens on the location of where you will move your three figurines to. You also make sure that the action you will be taking is also written on that token. So if you want to go rob the sheriff, I would place a rob token on the number which represents the jail on my action card. Each figure can move two spaces only. You can run for four spaces, but do no actions. Once everyone has placed enough action tokens for each of their pawns, the screens are removed and everyone moves their pawns to where that token was placed. Now comes the events. Flip over two event cards and do what is written on them. If you get a stampede, players on the street must roll to see if they are wounded by it. If they are, place them on their backs. If a train is drawn, you will be adding items and townsfolks to the gulch. There are a good amount of different events which can happen. Once both events have been completed, you will now do the actions of each figure in, in order of the numbers on the building. If two or more actions are done in the same building, check the number on the action token to see who will do their action first. Let me talk to you a little bit about each outfit's abilities and stats. Every time you do an action, you'll probably be rolling to see if you succeeded or failed. Each action will test one of your stats. So let's say you want to shoot someone and your shooting skill is 2d6. You'd roll two dice, but only keep the highest of the two. If you rolled a six, you can re-roll it and add that number to the six. Here are some of the actions you'll be able to do depending on which outfit you're playing as. You can mesmerize people, rob, fight, shoot, confiscate items, cast spells, use gadgets, prospect in the mines, recruit townsfolk if they are of the same alignment, gamble at the saloon to make some ghost rocks, heal at the doctor's office, arrest bad guys if you are of the good alignment, raise the dead from the graveyard, shop at the general store, brainwash opposite alignments, telegraph to see upcoming event cards, read a bible, and finally run to double your speed to four. Each player's pawn has two hit points. If you get wounded once, put him on his back. If wounded again, put him face down in the graveyard. Some events will raise the dead. This will bring anyone in the graveyard back to life with a harrowed token under them. Zombie pawns can't die anymore, but each of their stats is reduced by one. Most of the buildings will give you abilities if you control them. To control a building, you simply have to have more pawns there than any other pawns, including townsfolk. If you control it, you can use the ability written on the building. Here's how you'll get victory points once the game end is triggered. You'll get one point for each of your pawns on the board who are not dead, one point for each ghost rock you have acquired during the game, 
five points for each building you are currently controlling, you receive points for each of the objectives your outfit completed, and finally you get points for items, spells learned, and gadgets created. The player with the most victory points wins. So that's basically it. Meet townsfolk, control buildings, kill or arrest players, and complete your objectives. The theme and the setting of this game is great. They make zombies and cowboys pretty well. The artwork of the people is really nice, but the buildings look like they were created with those online map builders for D&D. The game mechanics are good, and players' turns aren't very long. The rulebook needs work and will leave you with a couple of questions. The production quality is nice, and we have some good laughs while playing. If your group is into Undead Cowboys, you'll have a good time playing this game. We're giving Deadlands a 7.5 on 10.